I received this question that when do we sum two probability and when we multiply them? Something like when do we write probability of A plus probability of B? And when we write probability of A multiplied by probability of B? I will try to answer this question. But as a side note from the beginning, it is not always one of these two. There are cases that we do not do any of these two and you need a different action. But for now, let's focus on these two. Let us consider a situation that I want to choose a shirt and a pants. I have three shirts of different colors, blue, green, and yellow, and two pants, one blue and the other one gray. If we only consider the shirts alone, what is the probability of me wearing the blue shirt? If no further information is provided in the question, such as my taste, or where I want to go, or any other piece of knowledge that can give you a clue about my decision, then all of these three shirts have the same chance to be chosen by me. Therefore, you would say the blue shirt is one choice out of three possible choices and you conclude that the probability is one divided by three. What if I ask you only about pants? What is the probability that I wear the blue pants? Easy, no? One choice out of two options that have equal chances. So the answer is 1 divided by 2, which you can say 50-50 or 50% 50 etc. But what if I ask about the chance of wearing all blue? Okay, now we are not dealing with one action. I am going to make two decisions. Decision 1 about shirts and decision 2 about pants. And again, if no further information is given, then it does not make any difference for me about pants decision if I choose something for the shirts, no? Would the chance of picking up the gray pants be different if I pick up the yellow shirt? No. It would be the same amount of chance as if I was going to pick up the green shirt. So in this case, we say the decision about shirts is independent from the decision about pants. It is important. If we have two decisions or two events that are independent, then we use multiplication. Note that we need to have two decisions and independence. You can't use multiplication where you are only talking about one decision without breaking it to more than one smaller decision. And also, if the result of smaller decisions are affecting each other, then again, it is not a place where you can use multiplication. I will give you more examples later. But for now, let's go back to our simple shirt and pants example. So the question of wearing all blue is equal to wearing blue shirt and, pay attention to this and, and wearing blue pants. This and is also a great sign of having more than one decision. So first decision, as we mentioned earlier, with probability one third, and the second decision with probability half. So the two decisions together will end up me in completely blue with probability one third times half which is equal to one sixth. It is not a magic and it is easy to see why we have this rule, which is called the multiplication axiom. Let's look at it in more depth. If I want to draw all possible combinations of shirts and pants, I will get the following figure. There are six possible ways that I can look like in these clothes, no? How are these six final results are made? 
Isn't it really a multiplication? For each choice of shirts, you have a fixed number of choices of pants. It is like multiplying 3 by 2 and getting 6. Now, what we want is the first combination, which is 1 out of 6 possibilities with equal chances. Good. Let's say for now we got familiar with multiplication axiom. What about the addition case? So let us pick up a different scenario. We have 10 shirts that you can see here. Five of them have a simple design. Two of them have circles. And three of them have a stripe. And I want to wear one of them. What is the probability that I wear a simple design? You would say there are five choices out of these 10 possibilities. So 5 divided by 10, that is with 50 percentage possibility, you may see me in simple design. Now, what if I ask the probability of being in a stripe design? Still easy, isn't it? 3 choices out of 10, so 30 percentage probability. But what if I say the probability of being in simple or stripe? Of course, you can count the options. But sometimes counting can be harder than using your previous computations. Besides, sometimes you do not have the whole information. Someone may inform you that the probability of simple design is 1 over 2 and probability of a stripe is 3 over 10 and no further information. Then he asks you, what is the probability of being in simple design or stripe? When you have one decision and use the word OR and each of the cases are disjoint, then it means you can use ADDING. Here we have disjoint cases. No shirt is both of a simple design and have a stripe at the same time. So it is satisfying the constraints of the addition rule. The answer here becomes 5 tenths plus 3 tenths, which is 8 tenths or 80 percentage. Let us move to another example to make sure we learned these two rules correctly. This time we are going to use dices. Question 1. What is the probability of having a double 6 when I roll two dices? Each dice is independent of the other one. Let's ignore the possibility of they hit each other and so on. So, if for example, the first dice shows 1, it will not affect the chance of any of the numbers for the second dice. So, we are having two sub-events happening independently of each other. That tells us we are allowed to use the multiplication axiom. Therefore, the probability of having a double 6 is equal to probability of 6 in the first one multiplied to the probability of 6 in the second one, which becomes 1 6 times 1 6 equal to 1 over 36. It is something between 2 and 3%. But if in this question I add an assumption that the two dices are attached to each other with a rope like in this photo, then the two dices are not really moving independently of each other and so we lose the independence assumption and therefore this axiom is not applicable anymore. Question 2. I roll only one dice and I want a probability of having a number which is multiple of 3 or multiple of 4. As soon as you hear the word OR and there is one action happening, you can think of addition. But first, checking if the two cases are disjoint or as some say, mutually exclusive, which has the same meaning. It means not happening at the same time, having no intersection. Multiples of 3 for a dice are 3 and 6. Multiples of 4 for a dice is only 4. The set of the numbers 3 and 6 has no intersection with the set of the numbers only 4. Their intersection is empty. 
So yes, the two cases are disjoint, and therefore the answer is 2, 6 plus 1, 6, which is 3 over 6, meaning 50 percentage. Good. But if I was asking multiple of 3 or multiple of 2 in a set of 4, then I couldn't just simply add them because I had lost the disjoint probability. The set of multiples of 3 and the set of multiples of 2 have one number 6 in common. We got examples of each of the two rules and also non-examples, which means examples of cases that we cannot use them. Just one more example and then we are ready to end this session. Assume you are going to hire one driver and one lawyer for your company. For the driver position, you got three applicants. And for the lawyer position, you got two applicants. Without any other information, what is the probability of having driver candidate one and lawyer candidate one employed? Are you going to use the multiplication rule? Well, if yes, sounds natural. You are thinking that the scenario is consisted of two decisions and are independent of each other. Okay, but I didn't tell you that no one has applied for both positions at the same time, did I? If no one applies for both positions, then the answer would be one third times one over two equal one sixth. But if I tell you that candidate three of the driving position is also the candidate two of the lawyer position, then choosing candidate 1 or candidate 3 of the driving position would give you different number of choices for the lawyer position. This is an example of not having the independence condition and therefore not being able to use the multiplication rule in one go. Okay, that is all for this session. I put some links for those of you who want to read more. And as always, if you have any question, do not hesitate in asking them in the comment section below the video.